So back in SS4, if we're using the SCP files for super elevation calculation, there was an option for the width basis on the lanes for nominal lane width. And that allowed users to define directly here in the SCP what the widths of the lanes would be. In this case, for this user, they have a nominal lane width chosen as their option, and they've said 12 feet. Uh, by default, in the Open Roads Designer, when it's calculating super using the, the ASHTO 2011 um, rule file, for example, when it calculates it, it uses uh, the actual lane width option, which was an option also back in the SCP file. But when it does that, it looks at the uh, width of the lane of the most outside lane. And in my little example here, I have a 12-foot inside lane and a six foot outside lane. So in this case, when I calculated super elevation using you know, the, default, um, the default XML rule file, which was this ASHTO 2011 Imperial rule file, it used the outside lane automatically, just looking at the lanes in there. And there are some statements in ASHTO that say um, use the width of the outside lane, but all the ASHTO calculations really kind of assume that the lane widths are the same, so it's no big deal for them. But for this case here, where we have an outside lane of just six feet, we do not want that to be the lane width six feet. So what we want to do is we want to kind of edit our super elevation rule file so it kind of mimics how the SCP file worked back in 2004 edition, or I'm sorry, back in SS4. Uh, by just hard coding in a nominal lane width. So let's talk about how to do that. There's two different ways I'm going to show how to do that. The first way, I'm just going to directly input the um, I'm just going to directly input the nominal lane width into the equation and force it to use that equation. The second method I'm going to use is to allow a user define variable to be used on entry. So let's go now to the super elevation rule file that we're using. And I'm going to modify, we did use this uh, delivered ASHTO 2011 when we created it, but I'm going to modify this one to make the changes that we're, um, that we're looking for there. So I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to edit that in my XML editor. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see where these uh, transition calculations are. So what I want to do is I just want to hard code in uh, the value there. So I'm just going to add a new variable in. I'm going to copy the one above it, copy and paste. And actually, I'm going to name my variable the same as what I called it back in the SCP file. I'm just going to call it nominal lane width. So I'll copy that and edit that new variable here. For equation, for the value of that, I'm just going to put 12. I'm just going to hard code in a value of 12.0. And for the um, description, I'm just going to say hard coded lane width. Similar to SCP. And then the last thing I have to do now that I have this new variable here is in the transition length equation that it's going to use, I have to change the width lane, which is using the actual width lane, lane width of the outside lane. And I'm going to use my new variable there. So I'm going to hit save on this modified uh, XML file. I'm going to go back to the product and I'm going to recalculate super elevation uh, for my section using the uh, modified XML that I just did. So I have that over here in D temp. And I'm going to use that modified XML file for my design speed was 50 and then I'll just go and click and accept. And when I do that, um, I'll run a report on it real quick and we'll see that our transition calculations now use this nominal lane width variable of 12 and my transition length is now using that longer variable so it's more um, more like what I was getting out of the SCP. So that's one way of doing it, and that's just hard coding directly into the file um, the nominal lane width, just like we did in the SCP file. So option number two is to define a user definable variable. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to use the edit super elevation rule file command, and 
I'm going to open that same mod um, XML file that I used earlier. And in runtime variables down here is where I'm going to add, add a new one in. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call this one user underscore input underscore lane width. And uh, this is going to be a decimal. I'm going to give it a default value of 12.0 um, minimum maximum value I really don't care about in this case so I'm just going to put some numbers in there I'm going to save that and save that to the XML file and then one last thing I'll do I'll save that again and I'm going to go back to my editor there I'm going to reload it from the modifications I just made in the product and I can see down here in the variables uh, list that I have um, well, it might be up at the top of the file. Let's go up there. Yeah, at the top of the file, I have my runtime variable, which is user input lane width, which it's going to ask the user when we run this file here. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to use that variable um, for the super elevation transition equation. So I'm not going to use nominal lane width like I did before. In this case, I'm going to put what the user inputs when we run this. So I'm going to just change it right here to be the user input lane width. And then we'll hit, uh, uh, sorry, hit the save button on that. And then we'll go back to the product one more time and we will run it using this new user input variable. So I'm going to go calculate super elevation. I'm going to choose my modified XML file again. And all these are the same. I'm going to choose 50 miles an hour. Select the rules file, select all these options. And then the last thing that will happen here is I'll get a runtime variable pop up here and it'll ask me what I want to put in. In this case, I'm just going to put in another number so that we have uh, something to compare. So I'll say OK. It does the calculation for me. And let's just go run a report on that now and see the results. So in this case, when we go down to the transition links, I can see my transition length is a lot uh, greater. And it used my user input lane width value here. Uh, to calculate that transition length. So, so um, I've been able to mimic what the old SAP was doing with that nominal lane width, either by hard coding it directly into the XML file or by using a uh, runtime variable to allow the user to input the value. And again, if I want it to mimic the actual lane width option, um, then I just have to be aware that the program is always going to use the outside lane to calculate the, um, the width of the lane.